right, hi everyone. Uh, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at module seven, at least in this video. Um, so yeah, it's a relatively short module to cover an extremely complex thing, basically. This is, this is one of those areas that we have been trying to figure out what the heck it is forever, literally. Basically all of our written documentation of, of um, since like thousands of years ago. We're trying to figure out what the heck it is. What is consciousness, right? What is this thing that we do when we think about thinking? Um, and do other things have it, right? Or are they, do they share at least in different levels of consciousness and things like that? So um, to, to the point where even to this day, uh, some people are wondering if maybe plants might actually, in fact, have a consciousness. So the ancients would say they did. Um, scientists started saying, no, they don't. Now scientists are starting to say, well, maybe they do. So there's lots of, lots of, uh, lots of debate here. Lots of things to look at. Um, like I said, it's a short module, but it's a it's a very complex thing. <laughs> Which is probably why this module is actually relatively short. Everyone experiences consciousness, right? Um, at least as far as you know, every human on the planet has some level of consciousness at certain points. Uh, but what does what is it? Right? Where does it come from? And those are all questions we don't actually have answers to yet. Uh, so let's get rolling. Like always, uh, check D2L for the PowerPoint if you want to follow along. It's a short one today. Um, but if you prefer just to follow along in the book, it starts on page 80. We're looking at module 7, Consciousness, Some Basic Concepts. Okay. Um, I also have additional videos for this area uh, that kind of explore this. There are people, this is literally their whole entire area of expertise is looking at like what the heck is consciousness. And generally, it falls in the realm of both, uh, or maybe all, trial, uh, biology, psychology, and philosophy are going to be the primary areas where they're exploring um, consciousness and what it actually is. So let's hit the ground running. So slide two, defining consciousness part one. So history in the late 1900s, psychology viewed as states of consciousness, um, which was actually kind of a first. Okay. Um, we are, so, so you look at the, the, the uh, trying to pin this down basically, 20th century, first half um, consciousness focus was often replaced by behaviorism. So essentially Freud and Erickson and William, uh, James Williams and all these guys, William James, anyway, I'm sure what it is. I hate people that have first name and last names, <laughs> both possibly first names. But anyway, uh, these early, early psychologists were really looking at, uh, kind of what is the thinking, right? What's going on inside our head? Freud and Erickson very much were wanting to understand the, the, the thinking process that we went through. Um, behaviorism really very much replaced that in most of the scientific approach in psychology. When they were looking at, at conscious, they were just like, we can't understand what consciousness is. So therefore, let's not even bother. We'll just focus on what we can actually measure and, and, and go from there. Um, so that's what they, that's what they did for the first, you know, 1900 to 1950s, give or take. Um, that's what they were looking at. After 1960, consciousness reappeared, now supported by neuroscience. So we finally had the tools to start looking at what the brain was doing, which means that I now have a way to measure what you are, what your brain is doing when you're having specific kinds of thoughts. Okay. I can also, and we'll look at this when we look at sleep and the like, I can also now study your brain when I know that you are in an altered state of consciousness. Okay. So the current definition of consciousness is awareness of self and environment. We are we are aware of the fact that we exist separately, right? One of the one of the things that they do, um, I don't, don't want to like permanently mark my nose, but one of the things you can do, and actually, and this is where you can see when when consciousness kind of wakes up in a person, um, <laughs> they'll, they'll they'll put a little dot of of makeup on the end of your nose. And they usually do this when you're like a baby, right? This is where the experiments and awareness of self come in. Um, put a little dot of makeup on the nose, and they put a mirror in front of them. And what they found is that pretty much every baby younger than a year old has no they, they never reach back and touch their own nose. Okay. They'll reach out and touch the baby in the mirror's nose. They're like, burger, 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 right? But the, uh, <laughs> but they don't reach, reach back. Somewhere between 15 months and about two years old, the majority of babies will begin to reach for their own nose. By two years old, pretty much every baby will, will touch their own nose. They'll see the mirror image and they'll, they'll, they'll touch their own nose and to, to, to explore this dot. That's on them. There's a handful of animals that'll also do this. Uh, elephants, for example, dolphins, um, and I believe chimpanzees, if I'm right, some of the great apes are capable of, of recognizing themselves 
um, and, and kind of reacting to it, right? If you have a dog and the dog sees a mirror, there's a good chance the dog doesn't recognize that's him. They sit there and like, because bark, 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 they're barking at that strange dog in the mirror, right? Uh, we don't usually, right? Unless you're in the middle of the night and it's dark and you like catch yourself moving on the mirror or something. You're like, oh, but uh, that's a different <laughs> Then Your brain is like, wait, no, that's you. You're good. Uh, so this is the basic, right? The ability to recognize the sense that we are something separate, conscious of ourselves, and then conscious of our place in the environment. So features, it allows assemblage of multiple information sources, right? I can compile all of these this data from all around me and all of my environment um, to, to make a, a structure of the world and expectations of how the world will work. And so what allows me to make predictions uh, given past experiences, right? Every time I've done this, it's worked out well. So therefore I can assume, which is usually stupid to do, but anyway, I can assume that it should work this time, uh, even if it doesn't. Right. Uh, focuses attention when, and this is actually one of our problems, right? When we flip coins and things like that, we, we're looking for patterns. <laughs> so it, it allows us to assemble all of this information. Um, and so if I have a pattern, right, I flip a coin and every single time it lands on heads, my brain starts going, it's going to land on heads again. It's going to land on heads again. It's going to land on heads again, which makes Las Vegas a lot of money, that kind of processing. So um, it focuses our attention when learning a complex concept or behavior. You're probably, right, hopefully, right now, focused on what we're learning, right, in psychology. Um, the fact that you're able to do that and bring in this new information is due to the fact that you are conscious when you're doing it, at least at some state, right, some level. And it involves different states, and that's a key aspect. So um, that'll take us to the next slide, slide three. You also find the image that is on slide three in the book on page 80. Like I said, this is a short, a short, uh, Short modules, there's only a couple pages, but um, these, are, these are some of the different states of consciousness. So some states can, can occur sim uh, spontaneously. Boop, they just kind of show up like daydreaming, right? You're sitting there and all of a sudden you're off in Hawaii or you're up in the mountains or you're uh, back home and you're thinking, man, I should be doing this or that. Or, or maybe you're in like a, the Lord of the Rings or something, right? Um, all of these things can be uh, affected there. All right, so I'm back, sorry. A little bit of break there. Uh, so daydreaming, right? We're looking at the different levels, type, types of consciousness. Uh, so daydreaming is one state where, where our mind basically just engages. It usually happens because you are bored in the present moment. So the mind basically is looking for a way to kind of engage itself. And so you essentially uh, turn off your experience of the environment around you, which is why you might get that like stare um, happening. This is that awkward moment where you're suddenly staring at somebody, and you, your, your mind is gone, but you're, you don't realize it kind of a thing. Uh, drowsiness, right, is actually an altered state of consciousness where you just are having a hard time keeping your eyes open. And you're just feeling you're so tired. Um, that can be. And dreaming, which makes sense, right? We, dreaming is an, you're experiencing something, but it's literally completely created through the brain. Um, it's generally not connected to the outside world, at least not immediately in that moment. Every now and then something will enter in like music or, or sound that's happening around you, but that's about it. Which actually now brings us to our weird random fact of the day. Number one, at least, right? First one. Um, birds are the closest living relatives to uh, crocodilians and genetically the descendants of dinosaurs. So technically birds are the are living dinosaurs. They're just tiny. Which if you ever see a chicken or a turkey running, you can you can kind of see like a T-Rex thing going on there, right? They, they got this like trundle thing as they go. Um, anyway, weird fact. Birds related to reptiles. Um, or at least dinosaurs and crocodiles. So um, some are okay, back to the back to the actual information. Some are physiologically induced. Okay. Um, so this could be like, like basically alterations in your biology uh, affect the the what you're experiencing in your conscious mind. So one could be like hallucinations, um, and this can be this can happen from like sleep deprivation. Um, <clears throat> to some extent, it can actually happen from from food and oxygen starvation, um, which is another technically another altered state of mind. Um, it can happen from drugs and all these different things that basically alter our our mental our, our chemical state. Um, orgasm is going to be another one where we actually have a physiological induced alteration of our experience of the present moment. Um, so yeah, I'm going to 
Makes sense, right? And then food or oxygen starvation. When you don't have enough of these things, it alters how you perceive the world and your ability to interact with it. So some are psychologically induced sensory deprivation. If, if you've ever experienced a sensory deprivation chamber where you're like suspended in salt water, um, in water that's basically the exact same temperature as your body and it's totally dark and you have like sound blocking all this stuff. Um, it alters your experience of time. It also it alter your your brain basically is like this is boring. I need to start making something happen, and so you actually can potentially experience um, kind of like hallucinations, um, but it's psychologically induced rather than physiologically induced. Um, hypnosis is another one, which I do have a video this week for that. Um, I'd highly recommend it. It's fascinating. He's a, there's a professional hypnotist um, who's starting to do some research on hypnotism, kind of like why does it work and how does it work. Um, but he actually demonstrates it in a, it's a TED talk and he demonstrates it during the TED talk, um, with the audience. So interesting stuff. And then meditation. Um, when we've hooked up people who are meditating, uh, to, to brain scan units, the brain actually alters how it fires when you're in the middle of meditation. Um, people who also pray regularly, you're going to find a similar type of a shift, um, in the brain waves and brain, brain patterns. And so that is going to be a, a, an altered state of experience. Right. And this is just some of the potential altered states of consciousness. There, there potentially are hundreds, if not thousands of other variations of these states. Um, and, and there's even like some people who are, who, um, say that we essentially hallucinate our conscious experience of life, um, going through and just kind of, you know, cause, cause it, it really is an interpretation of, of what our senses are bringing in either more or less accurately. Um, so anyway, so those are some of the different levels. Next slide, and random fact number two. Uh, ladybugs have a unique smell that that uh, humans are exceptionally sensitive to. So next time you see a ladybug, give it a sniff. No, I don't really. If you do that too hard, it'll go up your nose. But yeah, uh, ladybugs actually do, there's a smell. If, you, if you've ever come across every now and then, there's like a cluster of ladybugs that show up in the springtime. Usually when there's like a, an aphid outbreak, you'll have like a blast of ladybugs. There's a smell that they actually can produce. So, and, and humans, for some reason, are, are very uh, sensitive to the scent of that. Go figure. Random other fact, they're also known as lady birds. Um, and it, they, they were given that name when, I don't remember the year exactly, but several hundred years ago, there was an aphid epidemic in France and the ladybugs, uh, the people in France were praying and they prayed to, to our lady, right, Mary. And in, in doing that, uh, a giant swarm of ladybugs, a cloud of ladybugs appeared, ate all the aphids, and they named it Our Lady's Bug or Our Lady's Bird. And the name stuck. And that's why we call them ladybugs today. So anyway, next slide, slide four. Cognitive neuroscience. So cognitive neuroscience, uh, interdisciplinary study of brain activity linked with mental processes. What is the brain doing while we are thinking? Right. So if, I'm, if you're thinking about math, what part of the brain is firing? If you're thinking about your favorite puppy dog, what part of the brain is firing? Um, if you're petting your puppy dog, what part of the brain is firing? Okay, all those things are, are going to be factors here. There's an image here. Actually, you'll, you'll find the same image on page 81. Um, it has an image of a, a person who's, who has uh, experienced severe, like extremely severe um, brain damage. They actually got... The, the front of their skull was crushed in, which you can kind of tell in the picture, right? That there's some significant like rippling in the skull. I'm not supposed to do that. Um, healthy volunteers had the ones on the bottom there. Their brain has not been damaged. Uh, what this does, what this, what this has, what they use this for is basically it, it demonstrates our conscious experiences, right? Arise from synchronized activity across the brain. How we approach things and do things is going to cause the brain to fire in different ways. So in this case, uh, this is an fMRI, okay, so a functional MRI where they're, they're actually taking like a video of the brain firing and not firing and things like that. Um, the, the, the person who had su uh, suffered from the severe brain injury is non-communicative. They're basically in a vegetative state, right? They're unable to, to because of the damage to the brain, they're unable to communicate with, with the, the healthcare providers. Um, the parts of the brain, the reason, so the image in the left, there's a smaller portion of the brain that's firing, and the, uh, the image on the right, there's a significantly larger portion of the brain that's firing in both the patient and the volunteers. Um, what this is, let me see if I wrote in my notes. Boop, 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 boop. So they, one, one of the images is, um, imagine yourself playing tennis, 
and that's the left side. The other one was imagine yourself walking around your house, and that's the right side. So it engages different parts of the brain. With this, they were actually able to communicate with the person because the person could still hear. They were conscious within their mind, even though they couldn't engage their body, basically. And so they would ask them questions, yes or no questions. And if they were, if, you know, one of the, they'd say, if you want to say no, think about tennis. And if you want to say yes, think about yourself walking around your house. And then they could read what the brain was firing and they could basically get these basic answers um, or basic questions answered by the patient. Okay. Next slide. Slide five, selective attention, part one. Um, selective attention is conscious awareness focused on particular stimulus. Stimulus, not stimulus. Um, example is the cocktail party effect. Okay. Um, and so, so if you've ever been in a, in a party, right? And let's say there's kind of a rumble of everyone talking and you're talking with someone, you're carrying on a conversation. And then all of a sudden in the background, you hear somebody say your name. Okay. Um, at that moment, you're, you are no longer listening to the person in front of you. You are now listening to that conversation to see if they're saying something about you, at least for the moment, right? Um, this is, this is our ability to change our attention. And the fact that we can talk to one person and basically block out all the sound around us and or block out the person we're talking to to listen to what's going on around us is this selective attention. We're able to basically focus our brain and our thinking on one area while we're getting lot, basically bombarded by stimulus from all over other areas. Other, other areas. Um, so selective attention and accidents, rapid switching between activities degrades sustained focus attention. Um, driving with a cell phone, right? Uh, not a good combo, especially if you're texting. Um, my only accident, I rear-ended a truck one time. I was in a, and I was in a, I was driving along. Um, traffic was moving perfectly fine. My phone rang. I looked down to see, uh, who was calling. I saw the name. I was like, I, I don't need to answer that right now. I looked back up and the truck in front of me had stopped. And that was my only accident I've ever been in. <laughs> Dumb. Anyway, so yeah. Distractions, not a good thing. And uh, people who say they multitask, multitasking is actually physically impossible. The brain is incapable of multitasking. What we're capable of doing is essentially changing our focus rapidly between multiple things. Um, but in doing that, every everything that we're working on it is basically damaged. Like, right, if, if I give myself 100% to a given thing, I, that will be as good as I can possibly do it in that moment. If I'm distracted, my mind is flipping, flopping back and forth between multiple things and all this kind of stuff. Um, I'm not going to be able to give 100% to any of those things. And so, it, you know, even people who are like, you know, oh, I, I study so much better when I got, you know, uh, the TV on in the background and something like that. It actually is distracting you. You're, you're not going to be able to retain as much information because of the fact that your focus is broken into between separate areas. Now, if it's something really boring, it might actually help you focus. Okay, that might actually be true. But if it's something you're actually interested in, where you're actually stopping and watching and coming back and then stopping and watching and coming back, um, then it's, it, it's breaking up your focus. Um, same with like if it's music with lyrics and you know the lyrics, that can be distracting. If it's music with no lyrics and it never has had any lyrics, like classical music and things, um, that can actually help with focus potentially, especially if it's kind of blocking out things that might be distracting you otherwise. Um, digital devices used while driving increases the risk for traffic accidents. In fact, while you are texting, you are worse than somebody who is significantly drunk. You're better off getting, don't do this, but you're better off drunk and driving in the same amount of period, basically, as the person who is texting in that moment. Okay. Um, talking with passengers also increases the risk of, of getting an accident. Um, they've also found that different kinds of music increases different chances of accident. People who are actually the best drivers are people who listen to classical music no music or audiobooks, which was kind of surprising to me. I thought audiobooks would be distracting, but it apparently helps people drive. Um, so yeah, random facts. That's not actually one of the random facts officially, but those are some different random facts. So um, yeah, make sure that you're, you're as focused as possible. There's actually a gentleman who he is a researcher and what he does is study um, attention. That's all he studies. He's a professor. Uh, and when he drives, he refuses to do anything but drive. So he won't he won't eat. He won't talk on the phone. He he requests that everyone in the car be as quiet as possible if you're riding with him, because he's with his research. He's realized just how easily we are distracted, and how poorly it can affect, or how how negatively it can affect our performance 
in, uh, in a given thing. So there you go. All right. Next slide. Selective attention part two. Inattentional blindness. Uh, it's failing to see visible objects when attention is directed elsewhere. I'm going to recommend you pause the video right here. Okay, give it a pause. Go into your D2L. Sorry, as I try to get in my D2L. Um, go into the content for this week. And there's a video called Monkey Business. Um, let me just make sure, I want to double check, make sure it's in the right place. Just a second. Yes, if you scroll down into the, the video section um, in this week, there's a video called The Monkey Business Illusion. Okay, um, do it and then see what you think. This will, this is an, a, a good example of inattentional blindness. So, um, yeah, pause the video, watch the video. Okay, and then come back once you're done. Um, give you a second to pause. Okay, that's enough. Hopefully you come back. Here we go. Uh, so failing to see visible objects when attention is directed elsewhere, right? That monkey business one's a perfect example. I'm not gonna talk about it just in case you didn't watch it. You can watch it at the end of the video. But anyway, change blindness. Failing to notice changes in the environment uh, from form of inattentional blindness. Uh, for example, in the book talks about this one. There's a, there was a study done where they had, and I've seen a lot of actually like uh, comic videos and stuff on YouTube that have, do a similar thing. Uh, a person walks up and asks for directions from a stranger. Stranger begins to give them directions, um, and a couple of construction workers rudely walk between them, carrying a board or a door or something solid. Okay, uh, unbeknownst to the person who's giving the directions, one of the construction workers swaps places with the person who had just asked directions, and the majority of the time, the person giving directions doesn't notice that the person changed. Um, as long as the generally, as long as the person is roughly the same size. And roughly the you know has the same similar ish features there won't be a, a, a notice I've actually seen a couple where they did one where a man changed into a woman and a woman changed into a man and the person legit didn't notice okay that's rare the majority of people actually picked up on that one but it is possible to just be distracted and what basically happens here in our mind is the person doesn't really matter in that moment okay somebody walks up to you and says hey how do I get to the you know Southside Walmart or whatever okay the person ceases to matter at that moment. What your mind is worried about now is giving the proper directions to get from where you're currently at to the place that they're asking for. So you're like, you know, okay, boom. Basically your mind just turned blanks out that person. Like, okay, you're gonna go down this road and you're gonna go down, you know, about a quarter mile and you'll see that this such a thing on the left and at that point you'll take a right and you'll get all those kinds of things, right? Um, so the person basically doesn't matter. Uh, they've also done an experience where a person asks for directions or whatever. The person has the, total, the conversation. It can take quite a while. It could be several minutes together. The person walks away, and then a researcher comes up and says, hey, can you tell me anything about the person you just were talking to? And the majority of people can't give any kind of specific details about the person uh, because the person ceased to matter. Okay. Change blindness is going to be there. Inattentional blindness is the other part of this. Next random fact. Um, the Marshall Mathers Foundation for at-risk youth was founded by Eminem. There you go. Not Eminem's, like not the candy, but Eminem the rapper. Um, just founded the, 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 the Marshall Mathers Foundation. Okay, there you go. Slide seven. Dual processing, two-track mind. So dual processing, simultaneous information processing on separate conscious and unconscious tracks. Your brain is technically capable of doing two things, which I just said it's not but it is not consciously though. So you can have one thing going on in the background in your unconscious mind and another part or subconscious mind and another part going on in the conscious part of your mind. This is where like you're trying to pull a name and you just cannot pull it to save you. Okay. And so you're like, you're like, I'm just gonna go on. And then all of a sudden it's like, boom, if the name pops up in your head, like 30 minutes, five hours, three o'clock in the morning, whatever, the name pops up in your head and you're like, oh, there it is. That's dual processing in action. Okay, the mind is basically working on trying to pull that name while you were consciously doing other things. Um, it's also what can lead to you having like the feelings about things, like you're like, ah, I get a sense of something. You're, it might be that dual processing. Your conscious mind is not actually picking up on it, but your unconscious mind or your subconscious mind is. Okay. 
Um, blind sight, responding to a visual stimulus without consciously experiencing it. Uh, it's a condition in which a person can respond to oh, I already read that. Consciously experiencing it. Um, this is this is where uh, basically your eyes are bringing in the information, but you're not aware of the you're you're not consciously aware of the fact that it's coming in. Um, I just want to add right here. I took a little break, um, and I, I didn't go back and do this on the blind side. The book is a really good example of this one. I should have just pulled right from the book. Um, I say um a lot, but anyway, in this in this point, they had people who actually came in for for a study, and they had uh, they they were they were functionally blind. Right, they had no perception of what their visual, their eyes were bringing in. Although the eyes, their eyes worked totally fine, their brain could not perceive it. They put, the, they took these people, brought them into a hallway, and they had all kinds of things throughout the hallway. They could not see them as far as perception goes, all the items. But they told the people to walk basically through down this hallway, and the people successfully moved through the environment without crashing into anything, because their eyes were bringing in information. The unconscious or subconscious part of the mind was able to actually de take it in, deal with it, but the, the the conscious mind, they had no conscious perception of it. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that in there real quick. You can find that on page 84, just in case. And now back to the main lecture part. Okay. And that's actually going to be, again, the monkey business video is an example of blind sight. Okay. Um, visual action track, visual perception track are going to be two very different things. What you're actually seeing and what you're perceiving aren't the same, right? The senses are not perception. The senses are what how the brain interprets what your senses are bringing in. Uh, and that's going to be the difference there. Okay, parallel processing, processing many aspects of stimulus or problem all at once. Uh, so you're, 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 you're taking in information and basically just kind of working on it, solving it in multiple ways, right? It could be you're looking at maybe the size and the space, and you're also trying to figure out like how to, how to make it do it as, as fast as possible and all these different things. Okay. Um, but the brain is capable of, of basically looking at all of the issues all at once, potentially to some extent, depending on how many issues there are. Um, sequential processing is processing one aspect of a stimulus or problem at a time, new information processing or difficult problem solving. Uh, if I give you a, a difficult math problem, it's, it's the fact that you can like move from one step to the next, but it, you're going to be have a very difficult time with with kind of breaking this up. Okay, so here's a good example. Um, rub your stomach and pat your head at the same time. Okay, that kind of motion becomes can become quite difficult. The book is an example of like of like uh, if you're right-handed, try to move your right foot in a smooth counterclockwise circle and write the number three repeatedly uh, with your right hand at the same time. Okay. Um, or tap a steady beat three, uh, three times with your left hand while tapping four times with your right hand. Both tasks require conscious attention, right? Uh, which can be in only one place at a time. So if you're going, okay, eventually it could become kind of a mindless. If you're going, A weirder one too but anyway all the rhythms like that if you're a drummer or a musician you might have an easier time with that and if you're not it can it takes more conscious effort to initially get it going once it gets going then you don't necessarily have to think about it as much um so yeah basically that's going to be this the, the sequential processing where we, we are we have to focus on the given thing to, to really make it work okay all right last random fact Chicken Run is the highest grossing stop action film of all time, even beating The Nightmare Before Christmas. There you go. Chicken Run. Who would have thought? I wouldn't have thought that. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. At least as of, as of the making of this video, nothing else has, has done better. That's the basics of, of, uh, of consciousness. It's, 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 this is a simpler version of it, right? Like, that, this is a, again, there, there, this is an unbelievably complicated area. Um, that we still don't actually have a full answers for. We are aware of the fact that it's there. We're aware of the fact that there's different stages or levels of it, um, but we don't really understand it fully at this point. So that's where we're going to be left off with this. We're going to be looking at sleep and drugs in later on in this section. Um, so in the next modules, that's what we'll be covering, and uh, hopefully you'll find that interesting also. Uh,
Hopefully this also didn't confuse you too much, right? There's some additional videos, like I said, in, in the this week's uh, video section, so make sure you check those out. Uh, it can help you with kind of understanding some of the more complexity or, or bigger issues that, con that consciousness uh, gives us. So with that, have a great one. I will see you all. Make sure you do the quizzes, like always. Um, don't forget to do the, the four Loren facts, and I will see you all in the next video. Have a good one.